I think I had to ask them this a couple of times because when I watched yeah. the video again, I said it a couple of times. Not because you didn't get it, but because I didn't get it. Hey guys, I'm Kelly and this is Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Hi. So today we're doing a video. It's just a recap of her client session that we did a couple of weeks ago, was it? Mm -hmm. um, when I when I do the sessions, I record the videos and just um, upload them unlisted for the, the clients only. But she had a very interesting piece come through her session that was completely new to me. I'd never heard it, never heard of it. She just rolled with it and I thought that was brilliant. And so when she sent me a follow-up message, I asked if she would be willing to share this with others and let me record her in a kind of an interview style. So we're bringing this to you today. And Leslie, I wanna say thank you so much for your willingness to share this part of your reading and your, your other side of the experience. I know when we talked the other day, I didn't wanna ask too many questions because I wanted to, to get like all of the, I wanted to kind of hear it for the first time too. So when we did your session, one, one of the things that I noticed is, uh, you know, a lot of people come with questions like, you know, what is my purpose? What is my path? Kind of some clarification on, on if they're making the right, the right decisions or going in the right direction. And so you had a different set of questions. Like you already are very aware of your gifts and abilities. You've been working with them for decades now. So to, to paraphrase you, you were born wide awake, you know, with most of your clairs on. And for those who don't know what we're talking about, the clair audience, clair sentience, clairvoyance, claircognizance, the, the clairs. I think most people watching this will understand that. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Like just being born awake with all of these gifts? I was called that peculiar child when I was young because, you know, I had these abilities and I thought everybody did and come to find out later that my relatives didn't and thought I was very different. <laughs> But, you know, because out of the known 10 ones, uh, 10 clairs, I probably have a good five or six that are active and have been my entire life. So nice. not so much sight anymore. I kind of shut that one down, saw a few things that were terrifying and said, I don't want to see that anymore. So these eyes don't see that. But I know um, mostly it's hearing, smelling. It's the ability to perceive through feelings and emotions. It's that knowing that, you know, that, you know, yep. um, being able to say the right thing at the right time most of the time. It's that kind of thing. And then just knowing like healing energies, you know, so I, so I work with all of those and those are just kind of fluid. I've done them like, to me, they're just like breathing. Like, of course I have that. You know, why right. wouldn't I? Right. I don't even think about those. It's nothing I have to try to develop. Right. Mm -hmm. If I had to try to develop one, it would be um, psychometry, being able to, to ah. know through touch. Nice. I, I sense when I do it, but that one is the only one I really haven't played mm -hmm. with to try to develop the others were just there and on right know, like on right and so you so. were you were that weird child before it was like cool to be weird like nowadays <laughs> yeah. like where they're weird on their sleeve you know yeah uh, we own our weirdness now and and I think that's yeah. a good thing I think it's it's allowing people to relax into what's natural for them and I find that more and more people are you know these things are actually more normal and more common than we were led to believe or allowed to express. So I love that. And that makes total sense. Scorpio rising, just, just so y'all get a, an idea, Scorpio rising, her Uranus and South Node are in Cancer in the ninth house. Um, we talked about past lives as, as teachers, uh, as a teacher in several past lives, bringing that through into the, the third house of like everyday communication. We, I'm not going to read all of your chart, but like, uh, <laughs> Sun in Aries, Mercury in Aries, so very fiery, direct, which is great for the line of work you've done. She's also a veteran. You were in the Air Force? Yes, right? I was. Thank you for your One service. of the first women that was put in the electronics field. They had just opened it up to women. Wow. I got trained in computer repair. Um, Interesting. Which launched my career in corporate America with computers. Right. So what was it like mm -hmm. having these gifts, being in the military? Because mine didn't really kick on until after I got out. So what was that like? Or again, it's that was that gift of being able to know what to say at the right time. It was intuitively knowing like something's about to happen and kind of guiding, guiding things. Um, Avoiding you know, the landmines. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, like I went through NCO leadership school when I was the first woman to command the school, you know, so that was interesting Aries. to have command over <laughs> right. all of that. 
and mm -hmm. and look like I look, you know. So, right. but it was to me that was just the most natural thing, and I didn't have any trouble with the people that were in my platoon or in the training class or any right. of that. It was like right. natural, just yep. of course, you know. But it was more that it was always to me. It was like behind the scenes, like I could see what was going on, mm -hmm. and it was the gift of knowing what to say at the right time, that both in the military good. and in corporate America. Right. That's right. You're a corporate retiree. Oh yeah. You know, the dark suits, white shirt, conservative mm -hmm. corporate retiree. So you yes. can imagine how much fun that was. <laughs> yes. And so the reason, like the reason I wanted to at least touch on some of these points is veteran you know, growing up in our, you know, our age, um, when, when these things weren't really known or not so much known, they weren't really accepted. You know what I mean? Um, right. especially in the talk about it, <laughs> right. Especially in the military, in the corporate world. So you had these gifts on you, you had the, the gift. And let me tell you in those environments, especially high stress and high risk, knowing what to say, when to say it is very valuable. And yes. when you're dealing with people who need to hear it in just the right way, especially coming from a woman, that is yes. very important. So I find that interesting. Um, glancing at your chart, you've got Aries, uh, your son is in Aries in the sixth house. So I find the the lovely part of that is like the sun and Aries being able to be that direct. I'm um, also being a maverick, being that that independent sovereign person. So doing it your own way, even in places that have that structure, and then in your house of service. So when you decided you were done with all of that, just not even starting over, bringing all of those gifts into what you're doing now. I know you're an advocate for for like a child advocate for what twenty years. For twenty years, yeah, that's amazing. I my belief was do what breaks your heart and child abuse and child neglect breaks my heart. So I was an advocate for over 20 years doing what I could to make a difference in a child's life. Right. Right. And that protective. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like? I'll come back to the children later. Okay. So, um, so the reason that I wanted to highlight just some of those points is you have a lot of diversity. In yes. both the practical side with the military and the corporate, and also this hyper um, awareness with your gifts, you are a mediumship teacher, is right? Is that right? You're a master teacher. That's in one one of the things I I got into mediumship teaching recently because mm -hmm. I've always taught the spiritual awakening, spiritual ascension, that kind of thing, teaching about the clear abilities, teaching you to understand what you're feeling, and then. I was working with one of my other students and she's like, you really need to teach this class because everybody keeps coming to me after they've been to someone else saying, what do I do with this? Right. And so I'm like, well, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of just thought about it and I got this. I'm like, okay, that was that my guy wing slapping me. The wing that, slap. There it is. Now. The wing slap. Yeah. I love well, that. You know, I'm Aries, I'm Scorpio rising and I'm stubborn yes. and I don't always listen. So oh. I get wing slapped a lot. And when I, I love that. Get my attention. They That's come to people like you to say, would you please tell her this? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, well, oh, they, they, were, they didn't wing slap me, but it was, no, they wing slap I heard you me. say that now. Yes. Well, but they tell you to tell me. And that's when I know, like, you've been trying to tell me this, right? Mm -hmm. I go, I'm yes. Also, I'm also, <laughs> I can also be a little bit stubborn. So, you know, I think, I think it's a good pair. But on that note, so what, what came through the, the whole point of this video and what got me so excited, we were getting to this part where we were touching on like the Lyra, you've got your South node up here, conjunct Uranus, right? Um, in cancer. So bringing all of this through into the third house, daily practical communication. So you have your North node conjunct Lyra, you've got Sheliac, uh, the Lyra ring nebula and 57 Lyra ring nebula. And so we got to the point where I was kind of giving you some background about like the Lyran Wars and the, the polarity and where it kind of started, originated, became more divisive, uh, spread through throughout the galaxy, landed in, in Orion and Sirius and all of that. So as we're talking about the Lyran Wars, right, and how the polarity or the, the, the polarity wars and how they, they got further and further apart and they spread around. The, the galaxy at, by this point you had already shared several of these pieces of your background in uh, during the reading including the soul retrieval your your shamanic practitioner friend right and so yeah. when we got to the the lyran part um, and i hear the star guides telling telling me to tell you to do another soul retrieval i'm i'm listening to whatever you're telling me and i'm trying to not so much 
argument, like negotiate with the guys, be like, she's already done a bunch of slow retrievals. She's teaching this stuff. I'm pretty sure she's good. You know, and I was like, okay, I'll tell her. We were, we were plugging away in your reading, just going through and, and talking about, you know, the different facets of your starseed lineages. We got to Lyra. We were talking about the polarity wars and, you know, you're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And so all of this felt like it was checking out probably new information or, or new to you or different, you know, heard it in a different way, which is, you know, why you wanted the reading in the first place, right? Real quick, I know you had done some shamanic, like some soul retrieval uh, sessions with your friend before. Can you walk me through that real quick? How did that go? How did that come about? Your previous experience? When, we, when I first approached her 15 years ago, it was like, I want to do this soul retrieval and I want to do a bunch of them because I want to clear all these past lives. I want to let go of the trauma. I want to heal. I want to get past this. And she kind of went gulp. <laughs> so we, we worked for, I think in the very beginning, probably eight weeks, two to three times a week, clearing wow. two to three lifetimes per time. Wow. <clears throat> because I was on a mission. It's like, I don't, we're only going to do this and it's only going to take however long it takes. It's like, we're not doing a full blown, whatever we're doing just soul retrievals. Mm -hmm. And we did one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. And while you go, is there any more left? And she said, oh, honey, you're just getting started. Uh. Okay. So that's playing in the back of my mind. I'm just getting started. Oh, wow. So, you know, so she was used to working with me with those, but okay. I knew from doing them the first time, what the traumatic quantum leap that I experienced in my growth, my spiritual growth, the things that I could let go of, the things that I could heal. Okay things that you wouldn't even realize were affecting your physical body now until uh -huh. you cleared and did a soul retrieval on on a specific past life really okay so those i mean we could talk for hours just on a couple of those right. oh yeah mm -hmm. so anyway yes but that's what why i knew what to do with that right just well, never ever occurred to me i could do it with starseed lives it didn't either so it didn't it occur to me like i said this is the first time for me too and so I've read, you know, shamanic practitioner books. I understand the concept of soul retrieval. I know friends who have gone through it. I know a couple of friends who actually do that kind of work. I myself have not gone through that process. It would probably benefit me. But so I was completely familiar with the concept, right? And what was so fascinating to me is as we're plugging away with your reading, you know, the star guides are telling me like she needs to do another soul retrieval. I'm like, but she's already done a whole lot. I'm pretty sure she's good, you know? So as, as I'm listening to you, I'm hearing them and trying to negotiate, but I'm like, are you sure about that? She's done. I think she did like a whole two months straight. Her friend's probably done too, you know? And so I'm getting this information and trying to make sense of it. And they're like, no, she needs to do a star seed soul retrieval. I'm like, she, a what? Say that again. And so this might not be a completely new concept. Some of you watching might've gotten this, might've already done your own process. I've never seen this before. I've never heard of it. It came through in, in Leslie's session. And that's why I'm like so excited to share it with you guys because it was just fascinating. I'm having this moment with the star guys and you're like, yep, okay, I can do that. And I'm like, wait, what just happened? You know, <laughs> I'm still trying to wrap my head around what they said. And you're like, all right, that makes sense. I can run with that. I'm like, what, what are we doing? How are you doing that? And so it was this moment of like, I, it was so fascinating for me to just experience that moment of like, wait, how's this going to go? And so as we were talking, then they started telling me specifically what their parameters were for you and what would help you. And so I'm going to read what they told me because I, I went back and watched the video as they said it to me. Uh, and you didn't flinch. You're just like, yep, got no. it. And you didn't no, flinch. I'm like, okay, well, let me, let me get some words around this. So the, the guides, just so you understand how this is going. The guides are telling me this about her friend and giving her instructions to give to her friend. And this is what they tell me. The guides say, she, your shamanic friend is going to pull, reintegrate the two most extreme aspects of your past the polarized aspects of your past lives, pull those together back into you and then connect you to your most integrated future self. I think I had to ask them this a couple of times because when I watched yeah. the video again, I said it a couple of times, not because you didn't get it, but because I didn't get it. So <laughs> to give to give clarity to the, the people who may watch this video, Leslie is moving forward in some really amazing ways in her life right now. And so she came to the reading with just a few specific questions about directional points right nothing major from the past and so when this came through 
it was about tapping into her past starseed lives, okay? The way that I believe is we've basically, most of us, if not all of us, but most of us have been on both sides of the polarity wars, right? Especially if we're here doing this work. You know, um, the reintegration process, you kind of need to know both sides of that vibration to really fully integrate it, right? Would you agree? Yes. And you so have, that's- that's what understand we, it all. Right. And so that's what we were talking about at this point in her reading. And so when they said Leslie needs to go to her friend and do a starseed soul retrieval session. And yes. Leslie was like, it's going to be two or three. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know? And so it was, it was about going back. Her friend was going to tap into the, uh, the past starseed incarnations, um, probably in Lyra or as far back as they can go to where she was the most polarized on either side of that spectrum for her in her experience and pull those two lifetimes together those two aspects of herself pull those together into the retrieval and then also grab the aspect of her future self the most integrated aspect of her future self and connect those three together in the now and that was the instruction so that's what you ran with and i don't always hear back from clients about you know follow-ups and stuff like that within a couple of days you messaged me. It was like, I did the thing. It was phenomenal. It was powerful. I was like, wait, hold on. I got to hear about this. And so now <laughs> we're going to ask Leslie, well, tell me about that. Tell me about the experience. How did your friend receive it? Like whatever you want to share. Um, well, initially when I read her, your instruction, she was kind of like, okay. You know, <laughs> then when she tapped into her guys, it was like, okay, she knew exactly what to do and what to say. And so we did pull in mostly it was from Lyra and it was pulling in the aspects and then talking through them. And then she, because first thing she tapped in and she said, your aura is like a tornado. She said, you're like, you're trying to be in four lives at once. That's what every girl wants to hear. Yeah. You know, like, well, that's normal for me. So, you know, but she was able to calm all that down and do that integration and then explain part of what she was doing. Cause she tells me part of what she sees. And she was laughing about some of the strange animals she would see, you know, like that's the strangest looking elephant I've ever seen (laughs) and how not all of them were on planets. Some of them were on asteroids um i think my favorite comment from her was when she said well the asteroid is kind of like treasure island meeting star trek (laughs) and so that gets a whole new visual of what that was about but mostly it was the clarity on things that i thought that i knew but i didn't know that i knew you know it was like i've always known that i was a star seed but i didn't know from where Mm -hmm. so seeing your chart really like that made sense to me like everything clicked like yes So when we were doing this, like things were just starting to click and then you start to understand more about your purpose and how things got derailed or experiences that you've had. So it was tremendous. The biggest thing that I got out of that session with her was immediately my throat chakra cleared up. Really? I could tone at very high frequencies that I haven't been able to tone in for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it was just this natural tone and hold it for quite a long time. And I'm like, oh, that's nice because it's been a while. And I've not hit some of those frequencies that I've hit before. Mm -hmm. And it was just, just more of that settled. I know that I know that I know. Mm -hmm. And when you deal in metaphysical, spiritual type things, that's not an easy feeling to come to because you can't see it and touch it. Like you can a glass of water or the table. Mm -hmm. It's like you're trusting. Mm -hmm. So it just gave me more of that. Nice. So that's got to feel empowering, you know, It does, especially with the work that you do um confidence too right right what was that you had mentioned something about feeling home or missing home missing home I, okay. I went through about the next week of I my morning routine is I go sit out by my pool put my feet on the step in the water because I ground to water I don't ground to earth mm-hmm. and watch the sun come up over the horizon so that's my morning like that's what I do every morning and I was sitting out there and I'm looking at the stars as you know they're starting to fade and the sun's coming up and all I could say is I want to go home and I didn't mean it in the sense that I wanted to leave the planet but it was more I wanted that feeling of home like right. I want mm-hmm. to go home I want to go back to that feeling of home right this session with her that you helped facilitate was giving me more of that peace. Like I acknowledged that that's what I was feeling, but then immediately behind that was that, and you're connected. So it was that reconnection to what was home to me. Right. So feeling at home where you are now. Yes. Nice. Nice. 
So what was, so when you say that you were able to tone at higher frequencies, do you feel that like the clearing helped you bring through or yes. embody more of those star frequencies from your chart, from like just oh. more, more of you? Oh. More of, more of me, more of the real essence of me. Right. And it's hitting that higher frequency. And as an energy healer, I'm very well aware of sound mm -hmm. and how that heals. Right. And I would just be in the kitchen or sitting in the, the living room. And all of a sudden it's just, I'm ah, you know, nice just making sounds. And then I get to playing with it. So it's like, well, how high up can I go? And how <laughs> low can I go? So I just start playing with the frequencies. But that yes. was the first thing that I noticed was it was a spontaneous yeah. that's perfect that's yeah. wonderful um, what did you initially think when they suggested that you go through the process again but this time to reintegrate fragmented like pieces of your fragmented cosmic energies oh that was just an of course of course like why didn't i think of that <laughs> of course you know it was that kind of feeling it was like of course it was nothing right. strange and nothing um absurd to me to me it was just the next logical step right right it just res it's like all right that makes sense Bye. Well, if you do soul retrievals at all, and you only focus on ones you've had on earth, you're missing a piece of it because nobody in my professional opinion or my humble opinion gets to the point of doing soul retrievals without the also conscious recognition you've had more than one lifetime somewhere not on earth. So why would you not want to retrieve those parts as well? Right. See that and, the, I'm glad you said that it was fascinating that it came through. And also um, a friend of mine who, who has referred, like a lot of my, my clients come through referrals, you know, and so she's a shamanic practitioner and I can't wait to share this with her as maybe this is a new modality. Um, again, like, do you see this becoming um, more prevalent as like, yes. what is the training for this? You know, what, what would your, uh, your shamanic friend say about like, just trust the process and, and expand out trust the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're stepping into really strong Ascension awakening energy. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the early stages of awakening, that's where you're going to someone else to guide you through that. Once you step over into the actual Ascension piece, you can start to learn to do that yourself, mm -hmm. but you've got, you've had to have done a whole lot of homework. Right. in order to get to that point where right. you can put yourself I'm almost there to where I can almost right call up those lifetimes and do it myself I'm not quite there mm -hmm. but again I've done a lot through the right. years a lot right. of training a lot of release right and on that note like you are teaching mediumship correct you have a, a retreat coming up don't you funny thing about that yes I do but okay. you know that wasn't on my list of things that I teach ever because right. I focus again on the awakening and the ascension piece. And I'm, I love that arena. And right. I had a friend visiting and, and now she is a medium. She is a shaman. She mm -hmm. is a little bit of a psychic. She reads the Akashic records and she was here, but I'm always the one she comes to when she has questions. Mm -hmm. It's like she'll do a train from somebody else and then come back and go, they just said this. And I'm, she knows that I'm going to give her a different point of view. Right. So we talk about that. And so she's the one that said, you really need to teach this. So I kind of sat with it for 30 seconds to a minute. And all of a sudden I get this, of course I do. So I start looking things up and just within a matter of an hour, I had the whole thing outlined. Like it all fell into place that quickly. That's uh, kind of my guide to know, right. I need to be doing this. Right. So then I'm talking just, to the guides and I'm questioning and it's like, they said, no, it, they were adamant, absolutely adamant. It had to be this year. And I'm going, okay. do you know how much it takes to put together that kind of a, a, an event it takes three to four months, if not six months to put it all together. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of streamline it. And they said, now you've got it together. Go do this. And I'm like, <laughs> I love okay. it when they do that. It's like, they take away all your excuses and you're like, well, I got to do it now. Well, so I put it all together and you know, I'm prepared to do that. Now it's just finding the, the souls that are supposed to learn from it to come right. forward. So that's where we're at. So on that note, whenever I hear the word medium, you know, I think a lot of people um, hear the word medium and we think of just earth spirits or, or earth energies or energies around here. So I'm going to ask you a question, your, your professional and experienced opinion. Do you interact with otherworldly beings? Like I know there are people, yes. especially in this audience who are very connected to their star families. And so they don't count themselves as mediums just because like they they connect with their star families and they they interact with the Syrians or the the Lyrans or the Hyadians or whatever it is and so still a form of mediumship 
Okay. If you think okay. about like, what is a medium, a medium communicates with spirits. Mm -hmm. Okay. They assume that they're dead. Well, for the most part, they are because it kind of that fine line is I'm communicating with the spirit. I'm a medium if they're dead. I'm a channeler if they're alive. Okay. It's kind of how people oh, sort I love of that clarification. That. Thank you. But they're very, very similar. The skills are very similar. It's just that most people, when they channel, go into a trance. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a wide awake channel. I get the information and it's Thank coming. You, you know, it's I'm, just stream of I, nobody takes control of my body because I'm an heiress. Right. You know, I don't give up control ever. <laughs> you know? right. But I will get your information and I will put it forward. So mm -hmm. it's that that ability. But when you think of mediums, it's not just Sarah comes to you because Charlie died and she wants to talk to Charlie. That's one form of being a medium. Right. Another form is I'm quietly in my kitchen cooking and here comes Sam wants to talk to me because he knows I can hear him or see him. Mm -hmm. What do I do with that? What do I do with the ones right. looking for the light? What do I do with the ones that show up because it was sudden and traumatic and they don't even know they're dead? Right. So nobody's asking to talk to them. They're just saying, hey, you can see me talk to me. Mm -hmm. That's another form of mediumship. Right. So that's the one I spend most of my time with, sometimes with animals. Mm -hmm. But I do get a lot of the interstellar work. I get a lot of that. So they, tell me, tell me about me that. Okay. Um, when did that first start? How did it, how did you how did you discern that it was the interstellar? I guess when you're working, it's like if I'm talking to a man or a woman or a child, I can tell the difference. And so when you, you know. Right. And you can tell the difference because you, you, you can, we're trained to feel the, the masculine, the feminine, the infant, the, the older. We can do that. Yes. The interstellars come in feeling different mm -hmm. and their wording is different. Their energy yes. feels yeah. different. And mm -hmm. some of them come in just like other spirits do. They come in with good intentions and not so good intentions. Mm -hmm. So I've had experience with that. I've had the okay. ones that have tried to scare me. I've had the ones that have tried to terrorize me. And I've had right. the ones that have just lost and say, how do I go home? Right. You know, so right. But when I look back through my notes after we talked, I realized that I've been talking interstellar and galactic for years, well before I even knew that this was a thing. You know, it's just okay. that showed up in my languaging. And I'm like, oh. You know, because one of my healing modalities where I right. actually use the spoken word to clear. Mm -hmm. And when I was going through it and reading, it's like, oh, I have called in the interstellar galactic beings for years to come in and help me when I'm working with someone. Interesting. So it was just a natural next step. 